Are you familiar with a common childhood game called telephone, where we sit in a circle and whisper from one person to the next until the final player gets to reveal a comically distorted original message? Well, what if we play that game a bit differently? What if we played it with the intent and purpose of producing the most terrifying and alarming headlines possible? Sadly, that is exactly what is happening today in the sleep world. We're going to take a look at a perfect example of how this terrifying game of telephone is being played by much of the mainstream media, picking up storylines from academia and then distorting them until they reach alarming proportions. We're going to look at uh, uh, an email from, from Oliver in today's episode of Heard Online. If you're new to the channel, Heard Online is where we take a critical look at things we hear on the World Wide Web and see if those claims are true or not. So without further ado, uh, let me actually jump into this very email from Oliver that uh, was forward, forwarded to me from, from Narisha a couple of days ago. And uh, yeah, get ready. This is going to be another wild ride uh, into quite quite heartbreaking and upsetting territory, uh, to be quite honest with you. So yeah, without further ado, uh, this came in a couple of days ago. Uh, let's read it together. Oliver says, I'd love to believe your message to be true, but these news stories don't stop. I listen to Martin Reed as well as you guys. You're great for putting us with chronic insomnia at ease over our health due to the limited sleep we get, not due to lack of effort. We would love to sleep more, but it doesn't seem to happen. Why are we bombarded with these news stories about how lack of sleep is critical to our health? Are they influenced by lobbyists in the sleep industry so more products can be sold? Are they speaking the truth? And we are wishfully thinking that our four or five hours at night isn't going to put us in an early grave. Anyway, thanks for the community and the positive messaging you put out there. Thought you'd like to be aware of yet another negative sleep article. You all are a minority in giving hope to the sleepless. Thanks, Oliver. And here is the uh, the um, the link to the article he messaged he mentioned. So first of all, thank you, Oliver, uh, for the support and for giving us the chance to to take a look at uh, at this. So what we're gonna do is actually start with the the article from you know the, the scientific article, and then we're gonna jump into the article uh, uh, Oliver uh, mentioned because it makes so much more sense when you, when we see kind of this game of telephone being played. So we're gonna look at the original message first, uh, the original message that came from a uh, a research uh, a research study. So we'll take a brief look at this, and then I have the breakdown and you know prepared already. So this is. Uh, this was published in July of this year in NPJ Digital Medicine. Never heard of this. Uh, never heard of this. Uh, um, this. Uh, this journal, uh, which may tell you a little bit about the quality of the study. Uh, now the um, headline is: Age estimation from sleep studies using deep learning predicts life expectancy. And this, in fact, features M Emmanuel Mignot, which is a very, very well-known person in the sleep. Um, in the, and Susan Redline is here too, very well-known people in the sleep universe. And I was quite surprised that they were willing to put their names on this, to be quite honest with you. So um, without going, to, we're going to look at one um, one graph from this, but basically this is the rundown. So they, they took like, um, they, they pulled polysomnographic data, which is basically when you sleep with like all these wires and electrodes on you, like they check, you know, your, your breathing, your EG pattern, your, you know, how you, you know, um, your uh, muscle tone and things of that nature. And um, th th so they took, you know, they used like machine learning or like, you know, artificial intelligence to analyze 2,500 of these polysomnographic studies in people that were on average about, you know, uh, the average age was, I think, 66 years uh, old or so. And and this was, again, this was multiple studies, like five or six big studies that they had kind of pulled together. And the instruction to the, like, machine here was, like, try to predict the age of this person based on, like, the information you have. And when the machines did this, they were, like, somewhat successful, right? They're, they, 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 they were fairly accurate within a 10 year, like, you know, or actually like a se several year, you know, uh, uh, range. So if somebody was, let's say 62, 
the the machine would guess somewhere between like you know 52 and 72 something like that so it's you know somewhat correlated they were somewhat successful now he, here's the thing though like if we think about this like what would we expect to see well elderly you know elderly people do have more health issues and unsurprisingly this is reflected in how we sleep how our sleep looks and like the 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 one of the main determinants like the main factors that enable these machines to guess how old a person was was what's called a sleep disruption or sleep fragmentation which is basically how often we have these like little brief wake-ups that we don't even remember and as as you, as you may you know easily see that happens more as we as we age like you know a, a you know a five-year-old child has very little sleep fragmentation and the older we do the more we have and and part of that is kind of like just general aging everything does to some degree degenerate with age right but also due to health health issues so to kind of clarify this imagine a 75 year old who has congestive heart failure they have diabetes mellitus they have copd the copd they take many many medications will they have more or less consolidated you know straight sleep than a person of similar age with no health issues at all right it's it doesn't take a, you know a, a rocket scientist to see that of course the person with more health issues will have more fragmented sleep you know uh and that's kind of the, the first thing that really popped out uh to me like when i saw this like oh yeah that, that's that, there's no surprise there whatsoever but basically what this boils down to is uh you know th there's a lot of things you could you know that there's a lot of data here but it kind of boils down to like this graph here where uh the researchers say that okay we if, if you look at these two curves this on this axis we have a fall-off year so let's say most you know the average age of somebody and that was uh, part of any of these studies was 66. So the follow-up mean the follow-up was uh, 18 years was the most. So here somebody was let's say 66, and here they were like you know 70 um, or was this 84? Yeah, 84, right? So what is their survival rate where one is 100 percent and and this becomes 60 percent, right? So here in in blue we have minus 10 AEE, which means that the machine had estimated that they were actually a 10 years younger you know so the so they were actually let's say 76 but based on kind of the machine looking at their age they thought they were 66 okay and the red we have the opposite where somebody was actually let's say uh, 66 but the machine based on their sleep said i think you you know i think this person is 76. so this is what they called sleep age uh, in, in the other article we'll look at. So if you have a higher sleep age, you know, they say that you were, uh, you know, your mortality risk was higher. And this is what they say is reflected here that, you know, there was uh, uh, at 16 years, uh, you know, after the studies, the, 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 you know, they, be they began looking at this, the, the survival rate here was 65% and here was like, you know, 78% or something like that. And, and now, you know, when you look at this without knowing anything further, it can be like, oh, whoa, this this looks really scary and whatnot. But in reality, uh, there's, in my opinion, absolutely nothing surprising whatsoever here. The thing is, as we just talked about, if you have a lot of health issues, of course, you will have more fragmented sleep. Of course, your sleep will look, quote unquote, older. But not only that what we just looked at is actually just a model it's just like data put into a machine that is asked to like predict can you predict mortality based on these things and anyone who's worked with the models knows that there's so many things you can like there's one little one little input here can change the entire model so you never know to what degree they finessed and tweaked and massaged these models, you know, uh, you know, I'm not, I don't know anything for more than I just share with you. So I'm not like accusing anybody of like foul play or anything, but models are very, very tricky. What we saw is not like a randomized controlled study perspective study with like, you know, it, 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 this is just a model with like nothing surprising whatsoever in these results. Now, what the authors of this research study, like what their conclusion is, is what they call AEE, which is age um, estimation error. They say, oh, we have found a new kind of predictor of overall health, which can be helpful 
you know so i don't know what they're imagining do they imagine that we should do like sleep studies on like people randomly and then say oh your age estimation shows this and then what like what's our intervention if they have diabetes should we be like treat your diabetes but we would do that anyway right so very 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 unclear to me like where this takes us at all and maybe this is reflected in like this is published in npj journal you know what do i know anyways this is sort of like the initial whisper of the game of telephone okay and now we're gonna see what happens like as this message gets uh you know you know gets worked on further uh, by this uh, this this media outlet which i think we are all going to be familiar with it is this article actually came from the daily mirror and uh, daily mail sorry daily mail and you know actually just landing here you know it tells you a lot as I, as i was you know looking at this before i had to constantly fight these like pop-ups like right and left this is clearly uh, you know an outlet that wants attention you know well, you know things are just kind of like popping up right and left so anyway let's read the uh, let's read the headline here reducing the amount of disruptions to your sleep and making sure you're well rested each now can lower your sleep age and extend your life up to 8.7 years study finds well first of all the trigger meter this is kind of I, I i you can barely go higher i say this out of 0 0.5 this is like a 4.5 this is a really very very triggering article and not only that you can, you can see just immediately you can see how how this game of telephone has been played there's nothing in the study that's saying that if you like make sure you sleep more that you can extend your life up seven years the study didn't say that whatsoever that is completely inaccurate research you found that a person's sleep age is primarily determined by the amount of sleep disruptions that's actually true reducing disruptions and lowering sleep age can help a person extend their lifespan there was nothing about that there was nothing uh, about that whatsoever um now and here experts recommend the person keep a consistent sleep schedule avoiding alcohol and caffeine well th there's a lot of people saying that but that has nothing to do with the research article that you know this this uh article in the daily mail is like written about so um yeah i don't even know if there's more for us to say here uh let's let's take a look uh we already talked about this this means that um oh he, there was actually something else many people were were either 10 years older or younger in the sleep age when compared to real age although indicated that there were uh all though indicating that there were significant differences uh what i wanted to say here was actually uh you know they, they point out somewhere that there's most people don't even know no most people don't even know how many disruptions they have which you know just creates more confusion when they when they talk about that experts are not yet exactly sure why these sleep disruptions play such a large role in overall health though and this is kind of this misleading things like they didn't say that that they didn't say that these sleep disruptions cause any issues but the way it's written here in the daily mail suggests that the researchers thought so um and yeah it will just we'll just call it a day there uh oliver uh you know i hope i hope uh, i hope it's helpful to you to know to know what we just talked about and uh yeah again it, it, i say this so often but it, often i find like okay now we found we've found we found the most upsetting or you know the, the most upsetting thing ever but they keeps being like new things that are even more upsetting and this one was like you know the only to me going back to what oliver said in his email to me the only reason you write an article like this is because you know that this is going to be really really triggering and headline like this one is going to be really really triggering and to me there is an obvious like lack of interest in in, in conveying what you know what was in the actual original article which in itself was I think that in itself, the original article also portrays things in a way that is not very helpful at all. Instead of saying like, yeah, this is of course expected, like who would think any, we would find anything else? It is kind of like insinuated that there's something new here, blah, 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 blah. Well, I will end uh, today's Heard Online here. And as always, uh, let me know in the comments what you thought. And uh, yeah, we'll end there. Uh,
hope to see you back here soon and hopefully soon we'll have a more uplifting Heart and Line episode, which is always nice. But anyways, hope you have a beautiful day and this was helpful to you. Bye for now.